Hello, this is Todd. Can you hear me? Hey, this is Robert. I can hear you. Oh, very good. Cynthia moved firms. It's not, they don't appoint the person, they appoint the firm. Right. So Tom Ryan is part of the EDP. Right. See, it's a representative from oh, Okay. PDC. So she was here as PEDC. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's not okay. The firm. So Stearns Weaver may not be a member of PEDC. Therefore, right. Okay. Have to appoint. So Tom, so Tom Ryan is the I actual. Think is, re, is sending a replacement yeah. for Cynthia. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 And we'll do yeah. all that next meeting. Update the list. Yes, I have that. I had that on here too for today or for next. Week? I had it on here for um, election of officers, and I think I had it on roundtable discussion. I may have taken it off, or I think Tom was going to tell me about who he had chosen to be the replacement. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We can just talk about that. Okay. All right. Let's go, David. Am I on? Yes, you're on. on. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead. Is everybody up on the? All right. Let's go ahead and call the Monday, January 11th uh, TAC meeting to order. And um, as everyone can see, uh, Todd um, was not able to make it today, and neither uh, was Kurt Scheibel. Todd's on virtual. Oh, Todd. Oh, Todd, you're on. Yeah. Okay. So Todd is joining us virtually. And I'm Kurt, on. Who is the vice chair? Hey, Todd. I, uh, Kurt, who's the vice chair, was not able to attend today. So I'll be sitting in as the temporary chair for the meeting today. So I don't see any. Um, is there any public comment? Do we have anything for public comment? No, nothing. All right. So the next item is the approval of the meeting minutes from the meeting of December 7th. So do I have any? Oh, yeah. So we also have to do the meeting by consensus since we don't have a quorum. Yes. Five is a quorum. So we'll be making motions and making a second and then voting by consensus. consensus. Um, so the first item up is the approval of the meeting minutes from the meeting of December 7th. Are there any comments on those meeting minutes, any corrections or additions? If not, then can I have a motion to approve the minutes from December 7th? Motion to approve. Okay. No, I can I have a second? I second it. All in favor by consensus say aye. 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 Motion. And the first action item is the, oh, no. Um, the next item is the a report on the MPO board actions from the meeting of December 10th. Do we have? Um, I will be presenting the MPO action items from the December um, December 10th meeting. Okay, great. Okay, Tania. We had two advisory reports um, from CAC and BPAC due to the fact that we had to cancel the November 10th MPO meeting. We had advisory reports from CAC on September 9th, uh, CAC meeting, and on December 2nd. We had BPAC advisory reports on August 25th and December 8th. We also had the um, MPO um, bylaw uh, amendment to our bylaws, uh, give, providing the MPO executive director uh, new duties and providing them the ability to sign contracts agreements. Um, and we also had a functional uh, roadway classification by FDOT for State Road 56. We had a AECOM Vision Zero Phase Two scope go before the board to educate and engage for $49,957.66. We had our annual elections of officers for the MPO for 2021. We had our Federal Transit Administration safety performance measures from PCPT go before the board for approval. 
We had our AECOM um, support for the um, in-house staffing and minor PPP update scope for $48,892.04 go before the board for approval. And we also had um, our District 3 um, seat for on our CAC board go before the board for approval, which sits in Commissioner Starkey's district. Um, we did have two at-large seats go before the board. Um, unfortunately, there was enough information provided, so the MPO board requested that the inf more information be provided by the citizens. So in the February meeting, we will have them come to the meeting and present their qualifications along with an application that I've been working on with Terry for um, the MPO, uh, when citizens come in, they're going to fill out applications. So that way it's a little more streamlined for the board members and it makes it a little easier. Um, we also had the FDOT Safe Trip Initiative um, presented by Margaret Kublings from FDOT. And we also expressed to the board that there was an MPO Weekend Institute that um, was coming up for new board members and to explain how the MPO works and functions and that would be a great asset and tool in their toolbox. Um, and lastly, we will be having on the 14th uh, MPO workshop for our board members um, to go over the tentative work program that FDOT is uh, uh, for the PASCO highlights. Thank you. Okay. Who was um, who was elected as the chair for the MPO and the vice the, chair? Oh my, I keep pressing this. The chair for the MPO is now um, Lance Smith and the vice chair is Camille Hernandez. And they are also our MPOAC representatives that sits on the governing board. Okay. Lance Smith is our um, main uh, governing board member and Camille is our alternate. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks Tania. You're welcome. Okay, the next item up is an action item. And this is the DOT tip amendment, and it's for the um, two wildlife cor culvert crossings that are being added to the program for uh, State Road 52 from east of 41 to County Road 581 Bellamy Brothers Boulevard. So is DOT going to present that? or Yes, Jensen Hackett is on the line. Okay. Hey, Jensen. Hi, Debbie. Hi, the rest of TAC. Jensen Hackett again from uh, the department. Um, so this is uh, part of the State Road 52 uh, widening project that is going to be ongoing from US 41 to Bellamy Brothers um, in Central Pasco County. Um, so uh, project number 256334-4. Um, so this is adding two uh, wildlife culverts that are going to be running underneath State Road 52 that are in the area um, just to the west of Aaron Cutoff. There is the uh, preserve on the, I believe it's the north side of 52. Um, so it's just to kind of connect that to the south side um, where you have kind of some runoff for Cypress Creek um, in that area. Um, it is going to be adding just under $11.5 million to this project. It'll include these as part of the State Road 52 widening project. Did the, um, did the county and environmental lands make a contribution to this? Are they paying for a portion of the cost of the culvert? Do you know? I don't believe that there is any um, county funds that are being part of this. I think this is all state and federal. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. It's a good change. I know it's been discussed um, by the environmental lands folks for quite a while now, actually at least five or six years doing mm -hmm. those culvert crossings for the, the wildlife corridors. So, okay. So that's going to be next to, um, pretty near close to where the, I can't remember, Cuddy River Preserve is then, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's, it's close to that. Okay. It's close to that. It's, it's a, it's a good addition. And DOT, I've got to say, DOT worked really well. Sorry. Sorry. DOT worked well with staff. Oh, my God. Which phone is DOT? I know. DOT worked really well with um, Pasco County to get that done. So it's a good it's a good addition to the project. So any any more discussion on this or any questions on this? Move to approve consensus. All right. Could I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor by consensus, say aye. 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 
Okay, um, let's see. It looks like uh, the rest of the agenda is uh, concerned status reports, presentations, and updates. And the first one is the DOT work program update. Jensen Brain. This will be presented by Jensen Hackett. Okay, Jensen, can you, it's on the screen. Yes, I am here. Uh, Tania, do you have the PowerPoint? Up oh, there. Did you get the PowerPoint? Uh, Jensen, do you have it? Um, I do here, yes. Okay, hold on. I'll let you. I'll give you the ability to share. Okay. As you're doing that, I'll just pull it up for my. Uh... Okay. sure everybody can see my screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so I know an earful of me today uh, for this TAC meeting. Um, again, for the record, Jensen Hackett from the Department of Transportation. And I'm going to be walking you all through the five-year tentative work program for fiscal years 22 through 2026 this afternoon. The tentative work program for fiscal 22 through fiscal 26 is going to be covering project phases and activities that are scheduled from July 1st of 2021 through June 30th of 2026. Just a reminder that the state fiscal year starts on July 1st. Year one is included in the state's proposed budget, and this is pending legislative session and governor approval. Years two to five are just commitments for production and financial planning purposes as part of the overall program. And all of these projects do include FDOT managed projects and locally managed projects with FDOT involvement as part of the project and as a whole. So the DOT work program is a five-year plan that includes all public transit, seaport, airport, and rail projects. And it involves any transportation planning, intelligent transportation and ATMS projects, highway design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction activity. Every year on June 30th, the current year of the work program does end, and on July 1st, year two moves up to become the new current year of the work program. At this time, that new fifth year is added to the end of the program, and funding is then allocated to the next phases of projects that are programmed in the prior four years. New projects are added into the new fifth year based on the Florida Transportation Plan goals, the FTP, statewide programs, and local priorities, which includes the PASCO MPO priority list. This now becomes the tentative work program, which is where we currently are in the process. This presentation is going to be outlining the changes that have occurred to the first years of the work program and new projects that has been added into the new fifth year. This proposed work program will be submitted to the Florida legislature later this year for their review, and then it will go on to the governor's office for review and signature as of July 1st. At that point, once the governor signs the work program, the first year is included inside the Florida state budget and the work program is then considered adopted. So as part of the update process, what we do is first and foremost to preserve the existing program. So this would be to deliver any of the unfunded phases to projects that are already currently funded in the program. So if we have uh, currently funded a project that is for design, we would then look to fund right of way as that next phase. 
It will also provide any cost estimate updates to any projects that have estimated a different cost as of the last update. And it also adds new projects that could be added into the first four years, but are more likely added into that new fifth year. Some of the projects that are touched on this are safety and security projects, system preservation projects, multimodal enhancements, operational improvements, and of course, capacity improvements. And these are all based on MPO priorities, other regional priorities such as the TMA that Pasco MPO is a part of with Hillsborough and Pinellas, and other SIS, which is a strategic intermodal system and FDOT statewide priority. So in this process, new projects that are not previously included in the work program are included. The new phases of existing projects are project development and environmental, preliminary engineering and design, right of way, construction, design build, and other capital grants. And these all have their listed abbreviations next to them for review on these projects upcoming. And there's also select projects of interest that are part of the actual work program. One caveat to some of the projects that I will go through is that if you are thinking of a project um, that has been included in the work program previously, and you do not see that project listed, that doesn't mean that anything happened to the project. That just means that there were no changes to that project since the last um, time that you saw an update to the work program, which would have been last year. Um, so don't panic, the project is still there. It just hasn't changed since last year. So with that, I'll go on to the actual list of projects that we have uh, funded this cycle and that will be tentatively approved upon governor's signature. First is the planning model studies, which is uh, what PASCO does in their model studies with DOT. Um, this is just planning funds that have been added to fiscal 26. The next project is State Road 52, Schrader Highway from just east of US 41 to Air and Cutoff Road. This is adding lanes and reconstructing the highway. We just touched on it on that last um, TIP amendment um, that we discussed earlier. This is construction that has been deferred from fiscal year 25 to fiscal year 26. This actually is not um, as big of a deferment as you may think. Um, we were planning to um, let this project in June, which is in fiscal year 25. This has only been delayed by a month. So we're planning on letting this project in July of uh, fiscal year 26. Um, so it's only a deferment of just by about a month of construction there. And this obviously was number one on the Pasco priority list. Second project there is US 301 Gall Boulevard from State Road 39 to just south of County Road 54 in the city of Zephyr Hills. This is also another Pasco priority. This is adding lanes and reconstructing the roadway as well as the one-way pair system in downtown Zephyr Hills. Um, we have done some advanced acquisition right away, which has been added to fiscal year 26. The next two are two roundabouts along the State Road 52 corridor east of I-75. The first is State Road 52 at College Avenue and Pompanic Street in San Antonio. This is right of way that has been added to fiscal year 22 and construction that has been added to fiscal year 23. The second is the roundabout at State Road 52 and Meridian in the city of Dade City. This is another roundabout with right of way added in fiscal year 24 and the construction added to fiscal year 26. The next is Old Pasco Road from County Road 54 and Wesley Chapel Boulevard to State Road 52. This is adding lanes and reconstructing uh, the roadway um, for about that six mile section there. Right of way has been added to fiscal 24 and to fiscal 25. And this was part of a SIGP application that we received from the county. The next is State Road 54 from just west of Virginia City Drive to Old Mill Pond Road. Um, this is a resurfacing project with design added in fiscal 23 and construction added in fiscal 25. This is part of uh, the uh, MPO's TA priority list, so transportation alternatives list. School Road from Community Center Road to US 41 Land O'Lakes Boulevard. This is extending a sidewalk gap there next to uh, the school. PE has been added to fiscal year 24 with construction added to fiscal 26. And then Jasmine Boulevard from US 19 to Little Road, uh, just north of Newport Ritchie. Um, this is PE that has been added to fiscal year 24 with construction also added to fiscal year 26. 
And then US 19 State Road 55 from Pinellas County Line to New York Avenue. Um, this is a previous project that was added in last year's work program in the fifth year. Um, it was a um, standalone um, construction project. We have actually um, combined that into a design build and advanced that to year fiscal 24. Um, this is just lighting upgrades along that corridor from the Pinellas County line to New York Avenue there in Newport Ritchie. The next is US 19 from the Pinellas County line to the Hernando County line. This is a project uh, that construction has been added to fiscal 23. Um, this project is actually a uh, autonomous vehicle project. Um, it is kind of retrofitting the signals and the lighting along the corridor um, to be able to uh, essentially um, commute with other AV and other types of um, AVS cars and other vehicles along this corridor. Um, so that is again, construction that has been added to fiscal 23. I-75 from just north of the Thomas Prairie Creek Bridge to south of County Road 41 and Blanton Road. Um, this is a landscaping project with construction added to fiscal 22. And then in the city of Zephyr Hills, this is the Zephyr Hills Municipal Airport Taxiway B extension. This is part of aviation capacity and preservation. Um, this is the grant has been added to fiscal year 24 for the construction project of the taxiway B extension. So over the five years, the total amount of funding for um, Pasco County is just over $300 million. Of that, about 3.3 million has been given to the MPO for planning purposes, about 28 and a half million for traffic operations and safety projects, just under 9 million for intelligent transportation, so ITS and ATMS projects, capacity just over $160 million, Resurfacing is over $32 million. Complete streets treatments are receiving just under $2 million. Bicycle and pedestrian just under $10 million with just under $4 million coming from Sun Trail. Transit will be receiving just about $24.7 million. That is split operations re receiving just under $14 million and capital just under $11 million. And the aviation projects total just under $9 million for the entire county. So the schedule of the tentative work program for fiscal 22 through 26 goes like this. Um, currently, the online public hearing is live at the website there on the screen. It's also in the flyers that um, were part of your packet handouts. Um, so we encourage you to go there and look at the projects. It's all a GIS um, web-based application. So it's really easy to search the projects, um, find out any of the project information, and to leave comments um, with any of the projects that you see as part of the work program. On January 14th is District 7's work program open house from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will be um, limiting factors in that um, as part of COVID and the restrictions that we have um, in the building here. Um, so we are definitely encouraging you to go to the online public hearing portion at the website to view all the projects and to leave comments there. But again, we will have an open house here at District 7 headquarters on the 14th. Any public comments to the tentative work program will be due on January 29th. That's the end of the month. MPO objections are due on February 12th. And so any of that needs to be in by that date. In February, this is uh, will be given to the uh, legislature. They actually meet starting in March this year. Um, so they will have that chance to review and it will go through the Florida Transportation Commission as well. And then that will head to the governor's desk um, and the first year will become part of the state budget and the work program year one will be considered adopted at that point. So with that, I have reached the end of my presentation. So I would be glad to hear any comments or entertain any questions you may have at this time. Uh, Jensen, this is a uh, Venkat. Uh, I got a quick question about the traffic control on ITS along US 19. Yes, sir. If you want the FPN number 448485 one. Yes, sir. Uh, I know it says the construction is up for 2023, but uh, if I remember correctly, I'm working with operations. So they said it is going to be pushed to the current year itself. 
in the background, you may be pushing the funding. I don't know how they're working on it. I haven't heard anything about that, but I can double check with traffic ops because um, I know they're doing most of that coordination with our work program. Um, but I can find a definite answer just to kind of verify exactly that date for you. Okay, because uh, we had a conference call uh, last year, last month, basically, with uh, Rick, uh, Julie, and uh, Joe, mm -hmm. with the David and Davis, I believe, Davis Curtain Plan. Yep, yep, Dave Gooden plan, yep. Yeah, so we, I think they said the funding, uh, the central office basically wants to move forward at the fastest. So they said they may be looking to advance the project. I just want to get the confirmation, that's all. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll see on that. Um, I know because sometimes with those advancements, they can kind of come out of the blue. Um, so I'll just check yeah. and make sure that's what they're still working on to advance that project quicker. That's all. Thank you. I mean, I know sometimes when uh, funding does become available, that's usually what we like to do is kind of advance those projects. So yeah. I'll just double check for you then, Kat, and uh, see what they have to say. Uh, Jensen, uh, back in December, I remember that central office was doing a budget reconciliation for projects that were funded in fiscal year 21. So I'm just wondering um, if, if you can give me an update as to what projects were impacted. So the only one that I'm currently aware of is the overpass road project from Boyette over to 301. And mm -hmm. there was a decrease in the funding of about, uh, it was under $400,000. So I, I was wondering if you could look into that and see if there are any other impacts and I think that was the only um, that that trip agreement we're getting ready to take to the board um, or actually tomorrow it's going to the board so if you could just let me know if there's any other impacts to the fiscal year 21 projects I'd appreciate it okay we'll do Debbie and then um, Zimmerman Road was a project that's kind of been sitting out there for a little while it was a safe routes to schools project Mm -hmm. And um, can you find out what happened with the safe routes funding in general? And then also as it relates to this project, because I've provided additional information to DOT and we've kind of, we've been working on this one for a while now. So I was wondering if you could, you know, look into that as well. And then if okay. we can go back to slide 20 in your presentation, I want to make a point if you could just... Can you go back uh, to yes, give me just 20? one second. Okay. Uh, this one. So, so my point is this. I would like to see you have copies of this slide and put it in the agenda packet for the MPO board. Yep. Because I really think it's important that they see how much funding DOT contributes yes. to the county projects. And they don't remember <laughs> ever how much FDOT. you support us. And they, they're they always talking about going after grant funding and everything. And, and, and this rolls up from grant funding in addition to what DOT is doing on the state road. So I think it is a good idea to print this out. It's one slide and that they're reminded gently and they see this. So it, when you talk about package. DOT projects and you talk about funding and you talk about grants, this is the culmination of behind the scenes work that's done to help fund the transportation network in Pasco County. So every time DOT comes up and funding comes up, this is a general reminder of what it is that we're getting from the state. So. I don't care if you don't have to do the whole thing. It's just that you need to gently remind them yeah. and a visual is important and this is that. I yes. echo Debbie's comments because we always, uh, I mean. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay. So I know that um, just for that one, Debbie, um, all the board members will receive um, the uh, work program and all projects that are involved in Pasco County. Um, in any of the years. So it's not just the highlights I gave, but it's every single project across the board and they'll receive a packet um, with that. Um, but Tania, um, 
you can always uh, get this slide and get that to them for their meeting on Thursday. Because um, obviously the rest of us will be virtual, but, okay. This, this tells the story and it's quick and it's easy to see. And it's something that they, you know, I don't know how much time they, how much they dig, dig into the program, Yeah. but this is a snapshot and a snapshot is worth a lot. Agreed. So. I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Tania, can and you're you fine, Debbie. This PowerPoint to us also? Oh, yeah. I can't I'd get it to click on the agenda links on any thing that I'm using. But this is also something that we can take back to our city council members and mm -hmm. commission members so that they can really understand as well. Also, Debbie, I think that's good since we have some new folks on the NPO board, mm -hmm. too. So. And it came up with uh, the new commissioner. She, yeah. <laughs> it came up. So reminding always is good. Okay, um, are there any more comments on the work program from anybody? Anybody virtually? Do they have any comments? Todd, do you, did you see the presentation? Do you have anything you want to add? No, I just, you know, uh, I need to probably share that information, Jensen, about the airport, make sure Nathan, our airport manager, is familiar with that. I'm, a, I'm assuming that he's involved with that loop. And then, yeah, it's, of course, good to see the right-of-ways uh, proceeding with the 301 project. And, of course, anxious to move forward with that. No further comments on that thing. Yeah, Todd, he should um, have that because they're the ones that actually go out for the grant. Um, it just yeah. obviously has to come through our office. So he should be aware as far as I know. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hey, Jensen, just since I have the chance to, to comment, especially with the new underpasses for the wildlife crossings for 52, there's sometimes an excellent opportunity to put bike head. Um, crossings with those facilities in the future too. Uh, that way, try to cross 52 can be dangerous, but that with the side path and everything, the multi-use path going on, that might be an excellent opportunity in the future when we look at wildlife crossings to make them a bike path crossing as well, um, which is a great opportunity to think about. So I figured I'd just take that opportunity with our Vision Zero and how we're proceeding is taking advantage of those underpasses for a future bike that underpasses too. And there might be an, so uh, maybe you can follow up with DOT on that because there might be another crossing on the segment east of 41 to Bellamy Brothers. So you may want to follow up to see in, in the future what opportunities there too. That's why it's just an opportunity with us with that view the new underpasses kind of put that input in mm -hmm. for future facilities too. So yeah, so you could coordinate too with them on the on that second leg. Yeah, and that's a good point, Tina. Um, and usually Alex Henry um, looks at that as part of these. Um, and I know we've done some things like that um, more so innovatively in Pinellas County, um, just with their system so being built out as much as it is. So that definitely is a good opportunity to look for those type of crossings um, along the roadway. So Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other comments or questions or anything from anybody else? Or? And then just last plug, Debbie, I promise, two seconds. Um, just make sure you go to that website, provide all your comments, just as you did here. Um, anything you want to be heard, we're always looking for those type of comments. So um, make sure your voice is heard in this process. And uh, thank you very much. Jensen, do you want us to share this on social media as well for you? Um, yeah, you can um, uh, just essentially how you see fit. Um, if you need um, any type of assistance or, or links or whatever, you can always contact me. Okay. Um, and I'll work with our public information officers and we'll get that information to you. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Johnson. That was very good. Of course. So thanks for that. So the next item on the agenda is uh, the Turnpike. The turnpike uh, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise is, is going to present the work program update for the Turnpike, and I believe it is. The COC fine will be presented. Yes. 
mm -hmm. to the presentation. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, good afternoon, committee members. My name is Siausi, and I'm here to present the Turnpike's tentative work program for fiscal years 2022 through fiscal year 2026. So, County, there is only one project in the tentative work program, and it is project 444-486-1. And that is the interchange improvements on the Suncoast Parkway at State 54. This uh, project improves ramp operations at the State Road 4 interchange. The northbound exit ramp will see the addition of one left turn lane, one right turn lane, and one deceleration lane. The southbound on ramp will be enhanced by extending the existing taper style on-ramp into a parallel type of entrance. Construction is programmed in fiscal year 2022 for $4.6 million. Um, if there are any questions or concerns, um, I'm happy to take them now. Well, I do have one thing I want to bring up because uh, when you mention this, this question may come up, Tina. Yes. So when the Turnpike is talking about the, the interchange improvements and the ramps, there's a possibility that a commissioner will question the bike head accessibility on State Road 54 under that overpass so it may not it may be a good idea for you to circle back with DOT and have a response if that's asked because everything comes back if it's not been a hundred percent resolved so I'm just mentioning that to you because it may come up understood so thanks that was more for staff I think than especially with the tower road stuff mm -hmm. Well, and with the future overpass at 54 and Sun Coast as well. Mm -hmm. But what ha what's under 54 will probably yeah. come up again. So I'm just saying, might want to be ready for that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I'm all I'm all set. You want to keep going? Okay. <laughs> Was that it? Was that the only one? Yeah, that we only had one project on that. On the yeah, district. Okay, Hernando's okay. interest. Sorry. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 All right, the next item is the GPC contract extension with AECOM. Okay, I'm going to wrap up um, C and D together. Um, both our general planning consultants, AECOM and Tyndale Oliver, are coming up on uh, their contract expires in February of 2021, which is this, which is next month. Um, we wanted to bring this informational item to our CAC and TAC because we will that they are on their last contract extension. Initially, when the contract was written, it was written for, I believe, uh, three years and two extensions. This is their second extension. Um, the reason why we're also extending is because we have two scopes out um, with them currently, and they end at, uh, in June of this year. So we want to go ahead and get that work finished. Um, and then we will go out for RFP this year and we'll come back and let you guys know the results um, upon approval of the bid process. So we just want to let you guys know what we're starting the bid process coming up here. So is this one needed? Uh, the... It's not an action, it's just informational. Okay. okay. And then I'll just go on to E for you. Okay. So 
Uh, the next item is the notification of the upcoming TMA certification review. Yes. That's coming up fast. I know it's been That's four years. That's a lot of information, mm -hmm. but you probably, you already have it pulled all together. That's a yes. lot. Um, we already turned in our quadrennial questions. So if you look in your packet, um, we already submitted our uh, quadrennial questions for certification uh, that was submitted back in December. That's the first step. So every four years. Um, the MPOs, your TMA, which is Hillsborough, Pasco, and Pinellas. Um, we come up for certifications. So our last certification was in 2017. And this year, uh, it's four years later, so it's 2020. Um, we come up for certification on the Federal Highway and Federal Transit Administrations. Um, and this year, it was a little different because of COVID. So normally, there's a public hearing. There's a site visit. It's like a two- to three-day process. Well, that has been scaled back to one day and six hours. So it is definitely has transformed. The landscape of the visit has transformed. Um, it will be, the certification will be held on the 26th of this month. Um, and it will be, the review will be online from 8.30 to 1.30. It will be on a WebEx event. You are more than welcome to participate. It is open to the public. We are doing an all social media outreach. That is the outreach component versus the public hearing that's always been. Um, normally all the MPOs would get together, but we've kind of kind of just done it our own our own slot in social media and your everyone who does participate they can leave um, input about the TMA or they can leave input about PASCO in general about the transportation planning processes mm -hmm. in the, in this region um, or in this county so I'm going to actually send out a blast here probably this week. We're just waiting for the approval processes through PIO and the director and the ACA to be finalized and where you guys can submit your comments because um, we want to hear from you. Um, that is the best, that is the um, big part of this for the Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration. They want to hear from stakeholders, staff, mm -hmm. and the citizens about the planning processes. So um, I will definitely send out a basket to the TAC, CAC, and the BPAC to get input. When do they um, wrap up the certification review and give you their report? They will be back in June of 2021 to provide a um, board report. So the 30-day public comment period starts on 126 when we actually have the certification, and then it ends on 226. And then they compile all the public comments, and then they will um, provide it in that nice report. I'm sure you guys have seen in the past. Um, I think the last time, I think one of the biggest thing, the, the biggest feedback that we received from the um, from the last report was the PPP being updated, mm -hmm. and so I think that's when uh, Casey Kersey and her team from Amy Com stepped in and they, they did a very good uh, PPP um, update. And that's why we're actually updating the PPP again. It ties into that because now since all the COVID um, meeting precautions and meeting schedules and how we hold a meeting and quorum has changed, mm -hmm. um, the MPO thought it would be a fit to update the PPP with all these new regulations and standards so we can become we can be updated at all times because our documents are breathing right and and therefore it should reflect that so we're making sure that we're staying up to date despite our minimal staff as well but we're doing the best that we can so wow. okay. well, that's good that's really good all right uh thanks to Mia. All right, so we have somebody here from DOT to um, talk about the update to the 41 and 54 feasibility study. I guess it's Craig Mr. Fox. Craig Fox. Mr. Yes. Craig Fox. Yeah. Thank you. Happy New Year to you all, and um, thank you for having me this afternoon. Uh, my name is Craig Fox with the Fox Department of Transportation District 7. I'm here to talk about uh, the project that's number 41912 one Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great, great. I had some feedback issues at a prior meeting, so I'm glad it got better resolved. Uh, so first, I'd like to go over some background information. So uh, so, so four concepts came out of, um, both out of the department and also out of the uh, Vision 54, 56 uh, uh, mobility um, study that was put on by the Pasco County MPO. 
And those four alternatives are right there in that green uh, column on the right hand side. I'll get into those a little bit uh, later, but but that study studied the whole segment from um, Newport Ritchie and segment one all the way out east um, to pad to east of 75. Uh, for the purposes of this project, our scope is a little narrower and we'll get into that in the next slide. So I'm here today to talk about the 41, US 41 State Road 54 feasibility study. Uh, the project location map along with the project area that we're studying is to the right and that's encircled in the green areas right there to the right. We're evaluating four different alternatives uh, that are, of course, you know, in conjunction were, were born out of the uh, uh, 54, 56 uh, corridor study. And those four alternatives are elevated lanes over 41 uh, with a spooey, we call a single point urban interchange, uh, the PFI, uh, the CFI, and then of course in every situation we have the no build. In the next slide I'm going to actually have images of those uh, concepts so it's a little easier um, to digest. But overall our objective is to evaluate the improvements based on the traffic operations and also to select a build with alternatives so we can carry it over to the pd &E and then to the design phase and uh, hopefully you know we want to get to construction. Uh, next slide please. So here's here's some images of the four alternatives. And I'll just go through them starting with number one on the top left. The first one, and one thing I want to note on these graphics are those green lines. They indicate that lanes that cross over um, US 41. Uh, these maps are oriented with north to the top of the screen. Uh, so there's US 41 going north, south, and then 54 going east, west, just to um, make sure we're all um, oriented correctly. So this the alternative one involves uh, lanes, uh, US, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, US 54 uh, going over, and actually that should be State Road 54, sorry for the typo in there, uh, going over US 41 at a single point urban interchange. And what that is basically it, it is just an interchange that that's you know not related to an interstate, it's more of it in an urban environment. So it's just a way for us to still process all the traffic moves at intersection while still allowing uh, the free flow movements over uh, US 41. Alternative two on the right, uh, this one, uh, the PFI along with the CFI involves what we call displaced lefts, and it means basically uh, making the left turns, just pulling them out of the main intersection movements, and that increases the efficiency of that intersection uh, very, very, uh, uh, by a substantial amount. So a rendering of the uh, PFI intersection is on the right there on alternative number two. The third alternative uh, we call a continuous flow intersection. It's a little bit similar to the PFI, only in this one, uh, the, the configuration is, is certainly different. And in addition to that, it does have those uh, lanes of, of, of State, Road 40, State Road 54 going across US 41 also in there in green. And of course, alternative four is a no build scenario, uh, which we have to evaluate uh, with any study, any feasibility study we do. And that's basically the intersection as is today. Uh, so next slide, please. I'll get into the schedule of where we are. So right now, uh, we're evaluating and we're actually, um, um, we're wrapping up comments uh, with the first round of comments with the PTAR, which is the Project Traffic Analysis Report. And this report, uh, it looks at all the different traffic. Um, we run the traffic on all the four different alternatives. We extend it out to the future and we and we evaluate them to see what kind of impacts it will have. So we're doing that right now. Um, the next step would be us for us to develop the alternatives matrix, the concept plans, the technical memos, looking for those to come forward in April, and then update the task force in May, force in May. and we're looking to have an alternative public meeting over the summer of 2021, where uh, all everything will be on display. Of course, before that, we want to come to the boards um, with those alternatives to, 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 um, to, 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 to run by all county staff also. And so that's the feasibility uh, schedule. Now, for the entire you know life of the project, this is the current schedule that we're on. So, looking at the PDE uh, from 2021, uh, I'll extend a little bit to 2022 also. Uh, design uh, 2022 to 2023. Right now, right away is funded in 25 to 26, and then looked at construction in 31, and then may also bleed into 32 also. Uh, that did get pushed out a little bit. Um, just due to all, all, of, all of the budget impacts. And one thing I do want to note, normally we only stick to a five-year uh, work program when we show things on the screen, but since this is a SIS facility, or strategic, strategic, it's on the strategic and a modal system, uh, that is a 10-year uh, work program. So that's why we can build those dates outside of the five-year work program. Next slide, please. 
And here I have my content information. Um, I also have the consultant's content information, but but if you have any questions, we definitely request that you just you know, write it through the department instead, and I can definitely forward it up with, with our folks uh, to get it to the right people. And uh, we also have a project website. It's at the link below. Um, so you, please visit that to stay updated with any, any project updates. And uh, this time I'd like to take any questions. So I was just wondering, so I was just wondering at, the, at the beginning of this, beginning of this um, um, study, study, were you looking at more looking than four alternatives? Craig, can you mute Greg, can you mute your point while Debbie's speaking so there's no feedback? Thank you. Because I, for some reason, I'm thinking that there was more than four at one time. Like there may have been yes. there may have been six. Yeah. Is that yeah. That, is that yes, that's correct. That there were more than four alternatives initially, and and there were more than four evaluated by the um, 54, 56 uh, uh, vision uh, corridor study also, and those got whittled down uh, through through the study process uh, to these final four alternatives. Um, I don't remember the exact um, number. I can definitely uh, find it and, and board it to you um, with all, all those alternatives. But it, it was yeah, it was significantly more than four initially. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, I, don't, I would be interested in 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 seeing that what the other alternatives were too. Just just to for curiosity, I'm interested in see what else they had looked at. Looked and at. then that's no problem. Then, We're good. Could you send a copy of the PowerPoint over yes, to me no and anybody else? I guess to the tech. I'll just send it back out to the TEC. Yeah, send it to the tech. Thanks. So, Craig, uh, this is uh, Venkat. Uh, I know you mentioned the uh, project uh, traffic analysis reports are under review. So, are you all uh, going to send to the MPO after the reviews were done, or? Uh... Yes, sir. We just wrapped up our first kind of round round reviews, so we want to clean up a little bit, and then on the second submittal. Um, we also include the MPO staff. Okay. I would like to get a copy of that just for uh, to review myself. So, sure, sure. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, and can I get your name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Venkat. Uh, Venkat. -E -E All right. No problem. We'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Craig, about how far back? Um, for the elevated section to go over, do you recall? I can look through the project documents, but is it still close to a mile from the um, from the 4154 intersection for the elevated section? Do you know? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but but I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a mile. To typically, uh, typically um, we don't like to do that because it's it's a lot of expensive uh, structures between there. You're going to end up cutting off a lot of medians. Um, but I can pull up the alternatives and actually get you that answer um, this afternoon. Okay. There's about a half a mile. The limits, yeah. Right, and good. it wasn't going to be a solid. Was it going to be still through? That's the other question, too, is having the, the lower. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. You also know in the past there was a discussion about a viaduct. Um, but, but but for this purposes of this project, we're not looking at the at the viaduct across the corridor. We're just more, it's a lot, a lot more focused on the intersection. Yeah, you know that's good you bring that up because I think it was one of our commissioners. Yeah. I think it was Commissioner Mariano that might have been suggesting something like that. So it may be a good idea to to look at some of those previous alternatives because that may get asked at the MPO board meeting on Thursday. Especially for the ones that any of the commissioners suggested. Yes, ma'am, we'll do. Okay. All right. Any any more questions or comments from anyone? All right. Thank you. For the right. Thank you for having me. Take care. Okay, uh, next up on the agenda is the CMP task, for is task force issues. Do we, do we have any that we need to discuss or? I, I didn't have any. Let's okay. see. Kurt's not here today. He had an important meeting come up, so. Uh, no TCPT updates. 
I suggest we table the election of officers to March 8th at our next meeting due to quorum. Okay, that's a good idea. And you were, you were mentioning something about the public noticing and bylaws before due to COVID. And it may be in our bylaws, I don't think, I don't know if our bylaws have been updated with because of COVID. It so, is not. So we, so when we do the yeah. election of officers, we should probably yeah, update bylaws. those bylaws because we'll probably continue with this forum at least through this year. And then going forward, you know, I don't know what 22 holds, but it may be good to to memorialize those somewhere so that we have a, a record of those. And also to include, if it's not in there, um, the process if the chair and the vice chair are not here. So we may want to take a look at those and update those bylaws because I'm sure they're probably a few years old. Yeah, they haven't been updated since 2015. Okay. Um, do you want me to start? Why don't you, do you want to send the bylaws out ahead of the meeting to get any comments that the tech might have? Yes. And then yes. have a draft that you bring when we do the election so that we can do both. Mm -hmm. We can adopt a new set of bylaws and then do the election at the same time. Okay, and uh, next item is the roundtable future agenda topics. And uh, Tina has something. Did you want to do an update? Is there something that you want to update us on from December 7th, Tina? Well, I was at the... Uh, push, push the button. Hold, you got to hold it. Hold it. Sorry. <laughs> Not trying to... Um, so at the last meeting, Todd mentioned about Chansey Road and City of Zephyr Hills wanting a multi-use path along i'm not sure if it was the south side i have it in my notes somewhere yeah it's not, well, yeah. There's some south, notes south side south side south side mm -hmm. um working with current planning and our actually our long-range folks to kind of get the history on works. yeah on current projects and then there's a current project that we're looking at now too um getting details on multi-use path um i'm working with our folks on getting history and getting a clear understanding what's been done before before I start moving forward with what's being discussed now and then I think there's a new item that Todd just sent later today that I haven't had a chance to look at um, but looking into it um, I know there's some other projects in Zephyr Hills TA projects that we're looking at they're on top of our list of priority projects but that's kind of where we're staying now. I have to work with our current planning folks and our long range, um, long range folks to even know where to go with this. So we're working on that. So yeah, if I could, uh, item, could I add to that a little bit? Yeah, if I could please. And Debbie, thank you for chairing the meeting today. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, the a couple projects, the ones I emailed today about, and I know Tina said a couple that we're going to be looking at in Zephyr Hills, but that we've got two development projects right now on the south side of Chansey Road, uh, beginning at uh, Chansey Road in 39 and going east. Uh, we have two development projects that are under review. One's a mixed-use residential project and one's a mixed industrial commercial project. And of course, city has an adopted multi-purpose trail and our adopted multi-purpose trail plan shows a a trail along Chansey Road. And so in our development projects, we requested the required 10 foot multi-purpose trail. And of course this being Chansey uh, County owned and maintained yeah. road, my staff planner Rodney Corval has been, I know communicating with some staff from Pasco County to uh, do two things. One, I know the county just went through, uh, I believe some updates or, uh, you know, for the long range transportation, I mean, I'm sorry, right away preservation table. And we just wanted to make sure we had a clear understanding of where we were at with the, the updates to that right away preservation table. And if, if there's any proposed changes to the Chansey Road corridor, so we could take that into consideration as we're planning these development projects. But then 
secondly, you know, uh, of course, 301 is going to have a, a 10 foot trail coming south from Zephyr Hills and tying into 56. And that's uh, the, the main reason that we wanted to, the county to also participate in continuing, continuing the trail on the south side of Chansey. So our two developments and the, the county residential developments that are underway can all have this trail and ultimately connect to the, the plan 301. Uh, 56 trail. So, uh, you know, the, the county projects, you know, that project's really moving along. The turn lanes are in, but I don't see a sidewalk or a trail. I know we were trying to reach out to the county staff and see if that was on the plans, but we'd really like to see that continuity of the trail, not only on the city projects, but the counties as well. And uh, so that's on that. And then Debbie, probably the the key thing that's got me worked up is all these po new transmission poles on Wire Road running north of County Road 54. We, we got a big pole there right at the intersection of County Road 54 and Wire Road on the northwest corner. And then going up uh, Wire Road north towards Pretty Pond, I guess WREC has purchased easements uh, to place all these big transmission poles and you know, obviously the the LRTP shows a four lane road along that segment. We want want to continue the trail that we've started, and I just think we're going to have the the same old problem that we had on County Road 54 again. And I don't know if there's anything we can do at this late date, but it's really a problem when the cities and counties aren't being communicated about these easements that are being issued for these private utilities, and and you know it's impacting our roadway improvement projects. So I know we, I've seen the pictures and I know what you're talking about. And I'm not sure in the, I'm, I'm not sure if local government is involved in the purchase of private easements. I don't, I think that we get it, you know, if it's, if they're coming in for a right of way use permit, but when they're going to private landowners, and purchasing easements, I don't know what their review process is by the utility companies. And at one time, there were planners that that worked for some of these utility companies. They did have a planning staff. So I don't know if that still exists or not. And I don't think at our level, we have a lot of say or influence in how things are done. So this may be something that is handled by elected officials. It may be something that's done through some other higher level of coordination. So I guess maybe the next place to go would be to the utility companies and to find out if they still have planning staff that works with them, because at one time, and this is going back a few years, they did. So do they have planning staff? And then what is the review process? So it, it may, you know, I don't think we can make a lot, I don't think we can change stuff that's already happened, but you can start the conversation going forward on what can we do? So maybe it's approaching these utility companies and finding out what their process is. And if they do any coordination, if they want to do any coordination, do they have planners that look at anything, you know, and, and maybe try to work with them in the future as they're signing these transmission lines? Because at the end of the day, the utility is going to do what they're going to do. Um, they have to, you know, want to do the coordination. So I don't know how at, at our level we can affect that. So I it's a little, a little. Go ahead. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, it's just a little perplexing that you think, uh, and I think you're right, Debbie. I think it, it, from what I recollect too, it's going back a few years, it seems like we would always be involved with a right-of-way use permit from the, the electrical companies. But then I think, I don't know if it's the legislative legislation that changed where they pretty much got to do whatever they wanted to do where they wanted to do it. Um, but yeah, there, there still needs to be coordination. Um, 
at some level, and that's probably what I'll take as the next step to reach out to Rack and Duke and see if we can begin that discussion, and then yeah, see if it needs to go to a higher level legislatively. To yeah, I mean, um, and maybe it's something, and it's not that you want to, you know, subvert what they do, but there's a real concern when you're expand, you know, adding roads and putting in bike ped features and doing all our facilities and all these things. And you can't move these poles. It's yeah, so yeah. cost prohibitive. They're, you just can't do it. So you're left with doing nothing because you can't afford to move them. That's what we found on County Road 54. We, we yeah. could not move them. It couldn't happen. Well, the so County Road 54... Yeah, I just wanted to also let you know, Debbie, the County Road 54 interlocal agreement is on the agenda tonight, City Council meeting. So I didn't know if you were aware of that, but that I guess uh, I saw that was on the agenda this evening. And I don't know, I'm hoping that that pull right at the, the intersection doesn't conflict with the, the plan improvements at that intersection. I guess we'll have to see, but I haven't seen a survey, but. So um, I, th I think that's all that I had on that front. The only other thing I report on, uh, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear back from Brian Schroyer with DOT. Um, I know the, the 56 legislative appropriation is still under that ACER process. A little surprised we haven't had a, a meeting, but I've just indicated to DOT and Brian and his group that uh, the city and the Pasco County transportation planners and MPO are very interested in looking at the, the the route alignments for the extension of State Road 56 further to the east. So, but I I don't have any further updates on. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Todd. Um, I do have something that I wanted to um, bring up quickly, and at one of the last meetings, I don't know if it was the last one or the one before that, um, the. Um, the Camilla Hernandez was asking about um, the Morningside Drive project. Yeah. So what we did was put together a status report, and I'm going to email that to you guys, to you, Tina and uh, Tina, to give to her. So um, as you know, we're in the first phase, we're in the planning phase to do that project. I mean, they did get a special appropriation to, to fund that project. And so we started with the, the route study and the pond signing analysis and report. And there have been several tasks that have been completed to date. There, was, there were traffic counts that were done and um, they collected other relevant data that was needed for the study, environmental and socioeconomic data. They obtained uh, aerial photography and created basis for conceptual design. They have alternative sections developed, typical sections developed. They have design criteria that was developed. They've done preliminary alignment alternatives. They did meet with Advent Health Hospital to discuss the project that, that they have going on. They've prepared, the consultant has prepared a draft technical, traffic technical memorandum, and they've done a drainage analysis for that uh, new roadway corridor. So there is a public meeting that will be ten that is tentatively scheduled. There is no more information other than the possible date, and that's March 3rd. So there's more work that's going to be done on that to set up that public meeting. And it's going to have to be a virtual, I'm assuming. There'll be some way to reach out to everybody so that they can comment. And that study completion date is tentatively May 7th. So once they finish the report, they've done the public meeting, It'll go to the, the board and I'm assuming city council as well to select an alternative. So once that alternative is selected, then they move into the next phase, which is design. So I wanted you to be able to tell them, the, um, to tell um, Date City about this so they know how much has been done to date. So there's been a lot of activity on that project so far. Melody's like, I'll bring you up. <laughs> Oh, just hand it over here. So just to piggyback on that a little bit, yeah, so, just to piggyback um, on that just a little bit, Debbie, real quick before you switch subjects, um, we did have a meeting with the mayor and Brian Holmes, who's our project manager, and Jensen, and 
reinforce that this is a city and county led initiative, not um, not a DOT initiative. So, mm -hmm. so for you, Jensen, um, but we are providing her updates on a regular basis. She was thinking there was more involvement with, with DOT than what there actually uh, is. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the sense that DOT is the pass through for the funding, mm -hmm. that's their only involvement. Right. So, and the, in the county is had, um, there's a an agreement with the city yes. for the county to act as the um, project manager yes. for the city on this project. So that's huge. That's the first time I think that we've done that, and it's and it's working well. And the city is paying for the staff time for this project. So I um, yeah, we, we just want to make sure yeah that, it will get that to we her. don't that we have no you know we have we don't have issues. It's it's, it's moving pretty well. Yes, it is. And oh, I, I think need Debbie and the team for the work they've done. Okay. This is Jensen um, again. Okay. I and just wanted to, I saw uh, Melanie smiling over there and I knew that she was going to react just that way. So Debbie, I'm glad you brought this up, um, kind of resolving some of the concerns that I know Melanie and the city had um, with our meeting. So um, this is actually going to help out a lot for Dade City. Okay, good. That's my goal this year. I won't be here next year. So that's my goal this Are year. You I'll be leaving. Um, not, it's, it's not imminent, but I will be. Um, and also, I wanted to. It's imminent. <laughs> what's that? I said I feel like it's imminent. <laughs> well, not this year, but it will be imminent uh, next year. Yeah. Um, so I also wanted to point out, um, if it comes up, if my pet stuff comes up with the commissioner, that in this fiscal year I funded quite a bit of money with tax increment funding for us to take a look at the study that was done by the MPO for the Northeast Pasco, the hills, for the hills. And there were 12 roadways that were identified that need that needed some help for the cyclists and to create, and I'm treating it as a safety and operational improvement. Um, so there's a benefit to the cyclists. There'll be a, ben a benefit to, to people that drive that road because of the curse. So I put in several th hundred thousands of dollars for us to revisit the study that they did, determine the feasibility of doing what was suggested, evaluate the survey or, or do the survey work that's needed out there to determine constructability and move forward with design and partnering where we can, whether it's public works is doing a safety project or whatever's happening. Or FDOT. So, what's that? Or FDOT for any safety. Well, <laughs> potentially, but not not necessarily. It depends on how we shake this out. So if there's if we can afford to do what we have with the money that I set aside, then we'll start that process for those projects that we can for those sections of roadway that need improvements where we need some help, then we can go after funding from DOT for an area-wide improvement for that, that section of Pasco County. So there is um, a substantial amount of money set aside to begin that work this year. It's probably gonna be a few years in the process, but we are looking at it and there's a variety of solutions that are being suggested. So we're gonna further vet it and come up with um, some some work out, some projects out there. So I want to make sure that you're aware of that if it comes up. So we are we are moving on that study. Well, and that's good with everything else that's going on with us with the route study that we had the lengthy discussion about going from east to west as well. So that might help play into some of those. It is potentially too. potentially and we're. Yeah getting ready to start a huge active transportation plan. Um, and a lot of it is looking at data and mapping, the first part, because we got to see what we have to know what we need to do. So that's one of the first steps. So this is one of the, the plans that we're going to look into was that Northeast Hills plan as to figuring out some data. So that, we had this conversation before, but we were wondering about the funding. Story. Yeah, so that... Um, and I'm not certain that I'll be able to add more funding, but there's enough money for us to get some things done out there to get that work started and some of it finished. I would caution there, there's a lot of work that's been done already. 
And before you, you know, so please don't reinvent. So please, I'm going to ask you that because then we have competing plans and then we don't know what our priorities are and then nothing can get done. So so by us, and you're in the in the meeting and Venkat's in the meeting, so we got a big stakeholder group that's meeting. So as we work through this and come up, that should be the some of the foundation, I think, for what you're trying to create because then you will know that engineers have looked at it and the solutions have been evaluated and maybe alternatives will come up because it's a couple of years old. Let's say it's a couple of years old. Debbie, so, there, was, there was a previous Northeast Hill plans uh, that right. we did, the MPO did specifically. It was correct? with AECOM. It was with AECOM. Uh, to address the, the issue. It had started um, about 2015 or 20. Yeah, it's been five. It's, it's been five, five years. Or six years. So there has been work done. Maybe we should go back through the archives. It's, it started, I think, with Rick Hart. Yeah, we, been through several hands. Yeah, and that's the plan that we and Casey and I just talked about on Friday okay. as providing in. Oh, yeah, Casey's for, on here. Casey's, yeah, here. Casey's on here. I'm going to jump in in a second. Yeah, she's okay. in, but that's involved. one of the things we're going to do first off in tax one is going back and looking at previous plans, even the Greenways and Trails go. map, get all that data updated, and then use what we yes. What yeah. we come up with, what's construct, you know, constructible, okay. because yeah. we're taking everything that they've done and further refining it. Yeah, because I want to know. Seen that. You know, so you might see additional. Yeah, sorry, Casey. You might see additional items and just seeing as former files if they've been archived. Okay. So take a look if you can search the old shared drive with okay. Justina. And, and there was even some stuff done when Alberta was here. Okay. As well. Yeah, it goes back a long way. Yeah. Rick Hartman was touched this thing, Alan touched this thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's been a lot. So, Go that's ahead, where Casey. we're starting. Yeah, and the, and the um, endeavor. You're right. The 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 uh, work that AECOM did in 2017 was the outreach, where we mm -hmm. stayed at all of the the uh, like the um, park there and interviewed. I think almost over 200 cyclists of uh, everything to get data, and then brought it all together with priorities. So. Um, I'm just so excited to hear that it's going forward. I knew you would work in on that. So this is all really good news. Thank you. And and it will also be about safety and operation too. So th this is this is going to be bigger than just that. But this is the bike pad is a big piece of that. But we're also going to look at um, safety out there as well. So it it is it's kind of a global look at it, um, driven by the study, because that's. Those roads will be our focus areas. I think those 12 that were prioritized, they'll be our focus areas. But that has uh, funding and it has, there's a plan for it, another plan for it, a continuation of the plan. Okay. So that's it for me. And, and Ben Cat, did you have some? Yes. No, I don't have anything else, but thank you all. Oh. I have another meeting. I need to get out. So. You need to get out. Okay. So really I. Quick. I Yep. Todd, can you send um, the MPO, the um, Zephyr Hills multi-use plan, path plan that you were talking about that you had? Yes, be happy to do that. Would you like me to send Thank it to you? you? Sorry. Yes. Either a Tina or myself or both of us, because I actually wanted to look at it myself too. Yeah, okay. Yes, oh, okay. certainly <laughs> will. <laughs> I'll see if the guys think alike. <laughs> it's so um, coming from the date study side, um, we are going to request a planning study for signalization on 52 and Adair in that general area. It's a down around the park entrance for Berks Memorial. Oh, okay. um, we have a lot of things happening in that general area around the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And we're anticipating probably close to 2,000 new homes, um, both on the north and the south side in combination coming online. Um, some so of them are starting to ramp up. Before you go further, because yes. that is the morning side on one side, right? Morning Aaron. side is to the east. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And there, drive. Yeah, it's in that general area um, okay. that we are going to request a signalization study uh, from the MPO for some planning dollars through that. Um, only because of the number of developments that are happening. And I know right now you guys have your hands full. Have they filled any positions that are vacant in the MPO yet? Or are you guys still running on just you two? <laughs> uh, we are we are still looking for an MPO executive director and a senior and a principal planner. Or no, a se uh, I think a principal and a planner one. We're, we're still looking for all positions. So. Okay. <laughs> we're getting there. 
Okay. Slow boat, but we're getting there. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Melanie? Um, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Anyone else? No. Okay. So if there's nothing uh, else, then we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting for today. And the next meeting will be March 8th in Dade City. Thank you.